Hi, Susan here. How to get into fashion school, specifically the Fashion Institute of Technology, New York City. That's what's next. All right, guys, if you're just tuning in for the first time, my name is Susan Elias. I'm a fashion designer, couturier, instructor, motivator, consultant, and I have a large channel that's devoted to everything about fashion design. I teach you how-tos, I do inter have interviews on there, as well as this broad sense of the industry itself that I've been doing lately on these videos. So I'm hoping you're gonna watch this till the very end. Give it a like share, subscribe, hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos. Lately, I've been uploading two videos a week from my Patreon account. I am closing my Patreon account and I will develop another platform for the school. All right, so let's talk about this. You guys have been asking me to do this video for a while and I was reluctant to do it because I went to school a long, long time ago, but I've been doing some research on it and I'm not a whole lot has changed. So let's get to it. Let me tell you all about it and let's do that now. Like I said earlier, I went to FIT or applied to FIT um, back in 1979. So it was really a long time ago. But um, what's different about then and now, the only real huge difference is that it was done in person back then and today it's more digitally so a lot of things are sent through the the internet and then they review and get back to you but um most of it is pretty much the same i also want to kind of premise this first to give you an idea of what fit is what the fashion institute of technology is and what makes it different from the other universities that also teach fashion design when I was going to, when I applied to FIT, I did not really apply anywhere else. In fact, I did not apply anywhere else. I wanted to, I just didn't have enough time. And I did not apply to, uh, I was thinking about Parsons at the time and I was thinking about Pratt at the time. And I had a cousin who was going to RISD, which is a Rhode Island School of Design. Those were all very different um, universities in their approach to fashion design. FIT was pretty much uh, the standard back then. It was a neck and neck competition a lot with Parsons and FIT at the time. And, uh, but FIT prepared you for the industry. I'm gonna say that again. FIT prepared you for the industry. What I found in my research back then, as well as now, that the other universities have more of an art or rounded kind of idea of fashion design, whereas FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology, gets to the point very quickly, very strongly, and all throughout, so that when you leave that university, you are prepared for the industry. Okay, let's get started. At the end of this video, if you watch to the very end, you get to see my scary sketches that I did for my, uh, to get into the university. But I'm gonna give you the overall view first and we'll talk about that now. So the application process for FIT consists of three parts. There's a short essay, there's two design projects, and then there's a sewing project. And like I said before, over and over and over again on my channel, there is a tips on preparing for your portfolio and it reiterates the fact that I've been telling you guys over and over get some basics under your belt get some basic sewing underneath your belt get some basic drawing underneath your belt before you even apply to a university if you can if you cannot and if you have not your creativity has to be off the chart if that makes sense okay so FIT, at, I, I don't remember the essay, I'm not gonna get into too much detail with the essay, but they're saying that the essay is 250 words or less, and they're asking you to provide an example when your point of view differed from a teacher or employer during a evaluation of your performance. And how did you handle the situation? Tricky, tricky question. First, I wanna premise the fact that I have taught university level fashion design. I taught at the Miami International University of Art and Design, just so you know. So as a, I'm gonna have the teacher's brain 
on there as well as the student brain you know of on there and i will tell you that they're not going to want you to be argumentative they're not going to want to see you coming into the university and how you bulldozed the teacher and got away with it what they're going to want to see is that you have good problem solving skills and you're able to actually with authority and with um with presence be able to portray your point of view differently than what the art what the art teachers asking you or expecting from you or your instructor or your um, boss and what i mean by that art is subliminal it is not cut and dry it's not like taking a math test or a science test there um there is no sometimes right or wrong answer it could be even the attitude of the of the panel at the moment it could be the attitude of your instructor at the moment and it you know of course they have to they have to put in to affect that the basic skills that you need to have in order to have that project you know have be an A or be a C or be a D correct but there's also a lot of submissive type qualities that come along with it so if you're able to um, positively and enforce your point of view on an idea that you have had and you can portray that through an essay form i would say that would be a win-win we'll say about the entire application process of fit is that you have to be very spe specific you have to follow directions because they're going to want you to follow directions but then you also have to think outside the box if that makes sense because they have to see that creativity through there somehow right so um, that's what I would say I would give you for guidance on the essay. As far as the portfolio goes, there's a whole preparation paperwork on preparing for your portfolio. And they're telling you basically to, that, you, that you need to have two-dimensional design skills already, that you should know the basis of fashion design, you should have some garment construction, they're asking you also that um, when you do your, your presentation of your portfolio, as well as your actual garments that you're gonna be showcasing through photographs, that you have to have fabric swatches and you need to identify those fabric swatches. So this is where I stressed and stressed and stressed. I'm gonna put in the description box below some of the videos that prepare you to go to a university or prepare you to go to fashion school. And that I, there's a whole series I did called Summer School. There was a few videos on there that are relevant. I'm gonna put that in the description box for you to watch. And then there's also some other videos that I did just recently about whether or not fashion design is really what you want or not. I'm only gonna speak about or talk about the uh, program of fashion design, okay? Because that's what I know and that's what I teach, okay? Then they have a design portfolio project for you to, to sketch. And I'm gonna show you my sketches that are pretty horrific, but I think they probably saw the potential. I did not do any real formal illustration prior to going to FIT. So these illustrations are some of my very first illustrations ever that I used in order to get into the university. So they have to have seen some potential there, right? So you can't, you don't have to be perfect and you don't have to be an illustrator in order to, to be there. You have to be creative and you have to be able to express your creativity somehow, whether it's through the garment or through your portfolio with your, with your two-dimensional designs or through even your essay questions and answers, correct? So they're basically saying for this particular one, they want you to draw garments, okay? And they're already making you think like a collection or even or a line. They're wanting you to draw um, actual garments that mix and match that work with each other and I always stress you know guys when you're doing a when you're doing a line or you're doing you're create creating that you have to have an, an underlying element or an underlying um, idea they want you to do a mood board with that underlying idea that underlying motivation that those creative ideas came from and then they want you to do it says they want you to design four pieces that are worn together. So they want you to use like a pant and a skirt, and then they want you to use the top two times in a figure and then also a jacket. 
so that you have to have that top has to be able to work with the pants it has to work be able to work with the skirt has to be able to work with the jacket so it has to all kind of mix and match that's one of the things that they wanted you to do then they also specify that they don't want you to trace they don't want you to use a croquis so to speak but I will say that you can in fact use a croquis that you have developed if and I have a whole video on this on how to make your own croquis, how to make your own body so that you can sketch on. Um, if you need that help, that will be in the description box below. But you, you have, they want you to draw the actual sketch without repeating from a croquis, so to speak. And you will see from my designs that I will show you from my portfolio that each one of the bodies are different. I did not have a croquis. I didn't even know what a croquis really was at the time. I will tell you that. So they want you to do it all freehand. They're, they're going to know that your proportion is not going to probably be right yet. Those are things and tools you will learn in the university itself. So, but they want to see the creativity, they want to see the cohesiveness of your collection or your line of the four pieces or the six pieces. And they also want to see how you can take the rules and then kind of go outside the box, so to speak. So I will stress that you should go outside the box, okay, that you should be as creative as you possibly can be. And if you're one of these people who who was not good at following rules or following regulations, fine, that's pretty normal because you are going into fashion design and artists tend to have a hard time following a lot of directions. But FIT is a very unique university where they want you to be prepared for the industry. So if you're working outside of the industry, fast forward, you have a job, and, they're t and your boss is telling you to do A, B, C, and D, and you decide you're too creative to do A, B, C, and D, you want to do E and F, you won't keep that job very long. So you have to know the rules and then know where you can break it. And that's something you'll learn when you get into the university. So don't get too ahead of yourself. Don't be so create, you know, creative that you don't follow the basic guidelines that they expect from you okay and then we'll talk about the garments they want you to you you know to have garments that you wear i um i think i was wearing one of my garments uh, during the interview but i don't remember if i had to show pictures of a garment that i did i don't remember that part of it and i don't remember the essay part of it i just remember the portfolio because i still have the evidence of that here so but as far as the garment goes they're not expecting you to be doing flat pattern and draping already they say you can use a conventional patterns which i was doing at the time as well and but you can you know put your flair to it change it up a little bit change fabrication that maybe that that commercial pattern did not ask for or expect do some small changes whatever it is show your creativity show your skill set be very specific about what you show put some time and effort into it and now i'm going to show you my sketches on the flat and i'm going to show you how horrific they were but at the same time i'm going to show you how i was able to portray maybe something there was a sparkle that they could see that yes she's got some kind of a gift we want to explore that further and you're welcome at this college okay let me show you that now all right guys these were it <laughs> First thing is that when you do a croquis, usually they're, you know, anywhere from seven and a half, eight and a half heads, maybe the most 10 heads. I did mine 13 heads tall. If you can see here, maybe even further. I mean, these were monster, monster sketches. That means the size of her head, I did 13 times on the body. So I did the, the most extreme elongated illustrations that there are. I will also show you, this is where I was trying to portray that I, this was actual fabric that I was using. This was when Calvin Klein was really happening and I was, I was actually getting some of his jobber type fabrics. Um, and I was, and I made these actual pieces. So um, that I maybe impressed him as well. But I will say that you know, just basic drawing is wrong. You, you shouldn't be able to put a line through the center of your 
of your portfolio or your your sketches your eyes should be able to balance and go in between that means that these bodies should have been closer together her hand maybe should have been out here like that so composition is really really key this is a bad example of composition this is another one I did and I had a little bit of a description there I think I had to tell them what it was you know I was just portraying this uh, I forgot what they expected at that time but I guess I was portraying what they expected at that time and showed creativity with that as well um, this was another one I just might have been you know day to evening I'm not really sure like I said it was a long time ago so these were some of the sketches you have to understand most of these things I actually made so this one was actually also made so I made these garments so it wasn't so much that my sketching ability was spot on because it certainly wasn't spot on it was pretty horrendous but I actually made these garments and I knew how to construct them and I knew and then I designed them from the bottom up this is another one showing a suit I think they wanted a suit and some design elements of the suit you have to understand this is 1980 guys this is 1979 this is a knit dress showing panels like that and this was um this was a pencil drawing another thing that they're also asking is they want you to use different mediums so i used a pencil drawing for this this is just i think a number two or number three pencil um using white and black this was using um this was i think pencils this was um color pencils this I think was marker. This was a marker and and a straight line marker. Uh, this I think was the same way. I think this might have been. Yeah, that's a marker as well. This was a marker. I think this one was. I forgot what I what kind of medium I used there as well. But they want you to use different types of medium as as well, meaning pencil, markers, paint, watercolor. Uh, acrylic you know show that you have diversity with that make sure you understand the basics of color and composition and the element of where your eye will will flow and um, you know good luck and let me know if you have any other questions put it in down below in the comments and I will answer them because I want to give you as much of a leg up as possible to get into the university if that's what you wish uh, FIT, I guess, will be resuming um, this fall. So, thank you for watching.